and I'm back for another production related talk tutorial whatever you want to call it I hate the word tutorial just too impersonal to me this is just me fucking around in the studio as always whether I'm being filmed or not I'm just fucking around uh, and that's all that's the way it's always been <laughs> but anyway um yeah, so today I want to start off this little session with a question about why you started getting into production, why you started getting into making music. Uh, and it's a question I ask myself a lot uh, at, at different points in my life. Uh, it's been a harder question to answer. I think when I first started out, it was really easy. And it was just a really, you know, kind of matter of fact space that I entered in my life where I just had this burning desire to do it. Uh, and I was really naive in a lot of ways. I didn't, I didn't know, how, you know, what went into making music, especially electronic music. I had no clue. I just heard, and it's probably the same for everybody. I just heard some shit that I liked. I went to a bunch of shows and I was like, fuck, I want to do that. I want to DJ. And then... That led way to I want to make my own songs that I want to play out. Um, and I'm sure that that's pretty standard for everybody, you know. Um, but one of the things that happens is, you know, the second you open up that hood or pull back that curtain into the world of making your own, I think it's like once you make your first song, uh, you realize that there's a whole fuckload of shit that you need to learn. Um, and it's daunting. There's there's so much. There's all these little universes. And it's even hard to decide or differentiate, you know, the difference between, you know, synthesis and engineering and songwriting and, you know, sampling. All these different little worlds of skill sets that, you know, either they're they're directly connected or certain degrees of separation between them and how they interact with each other, these different skill sets. Uh, and I think the longer you do it, you start realizing that they're all very connected. And most importantly, and this is what I'm getting to, is your sensibilities for sound, um, your understanding of what happens to a sound when you, you know, use an EQ to boost things or take things away from a sound or use a compressor to, you know, kind of amplify the overall uh, loudness of a sound um, by reducing the volume of other places in the sound if you're using like a multiband compressor. Uh, and, I mean, it keeps going from there, right? I think you, after a while it just becomes kind of uh, a lens that, uh, like if, if you use like a visual representation of sound it becomes a lens that you're looking at sound through and kind of one of the unfortunate side effects is that it's really hard to remember what it was like to just from a naive perspective listen to a song or have an idea and not instantly think about how you're going to execute that idea um and or or listening to a song and being like, oh, I really love that, but I don't like this. Uh, it's just like this constant pair of sunglasses that you have on as a producer. Um, another thing that ends up happening is I think you end up in these crazy rabbit holes after a while, where you find yourself, uh, if you're like me, just asking more and more questions, and and it leads you to these really obscure places like the th stuff we're going to talk about today like making drums from scratch using synthesizers uh it's i think you end up I, I can imagine like somebody coming into the room that just started making music you know because they went to a couple of shows and they see you you know this tedious uh process of building a drum from scratch it's like why don't you just use a sample pack you know uh, there's plenty of drums and you can just pull them right out and you can start working on your song. Uh, 
And I'll be honest with you. I mean, there's a couple moments that I've had over the last, you know, couple years where I have been doing super tedious things at this point, like with sound design and making drums is super tedious. It's not a difficult concept, but getting it right is tough. Uh, and it takes a lot of restraint. It's an exercise in restraint. And it's frustrating when you're not getting the kinds of results that you're looking for. Um, and yeah, it makes you question, why, why don't I just take the easy route? I, can, I know in my head what I'm looking for, and I can achieve it with samples, you know? But I want to offer a little bit of kind of, and not advice, but more kind of like reassurance or validation to anybody out there that, that wants to learn how to do some of these more tedious things in the studio. Uh, learning how to do some of the more advanced stuff, jumping into the deep end, uh, it, I think it, that lens we're talking about, it becomes so much more detailed. Uh, your sensibilities become so much more refined. Like I imagine being like a hunter, uh, like, our, like our, our ancestors in the woods, like hunting animals and maybe even being hunted. And you're just, every little noise that you hear is not just a noise. There's some, there's packets of information that are associated with that. I kind of feel the same way with like getting into the nuts and bolts of how to design sounds from scratch. I think it just, it affects your sensibilities in ways that you may not even realize on a conscious level, just getting the feeling for how things should sound. And also if you're trying to learn how to use a new piece of software, or new tool, new synthesizer. Uh, learning how to build stuff from scratch with it is, I think, the only way, really, to become intimately connected with your tool. So imagine, like, playing a guitar. Uh, you know, I mean, someone just showing you, here's the strings, you know, here's your the knobs you use for, you know, your volume, and you got a little, cr like, crossover control and a whammy bar and I mean people can show you all the pieces of how it works but the only way to become a great guitar player is just to play guitar every fucking day um and it's the same thing with using a synth and uh I, I think even a guitar player would tell you like to get the right kinds of tones and stuff the combination of a lot of different sensibilities including processing and all this other stuff, but most importantly, it's what's happening in your mind and in, and how you, how your ears are interacting with your mind. Um. So, I just wanted to say, if you've listened this far into this tutorial, I just want to say, you know, you're I have a lot of respect for what you're you're trying to do, uh, because it's important, and there's going to be a lot of people around you that are going to tell you that it's not important, um, but it's important to you. And that's what's that's that's what making music and developing your own sound is all about is is uh is you seeing how this all plays into uh becoming a better musician you know if you listen to other people and what's important to them uh that's that becomes a very slippery slope uh and and you can find yourself in this place where you've lost your direction as a musician. Um, so I thought that was just, I, I want to start off just by saying something I've been thinking about and maybe that resonates with you as a, as a, as a person who likes making music. Um, so let's just get it, get into it. <laughs> I talk too much in these things. I hope you, I hope this means something to somebody. All right. Hey, what's up everybody? Okay. So let's get started. Making a fucking snare. Um, well, first things first, I said I was going to use Serum. So let's open up Serum. There it is. Hey. Uh, okay, so I'm thinking about this. The way that I go about it, it's like a challenge in itself to make a snare just using one instance of Serum. Uh... But that's not really the way that I go about like 
my creative process. I like doing like a lot, a lot of layering. So I'm gonna use a bunch of different instances of Serum. Um, so I'm gonna like build the pieces in succession. So it's not gonna really sound cool until we get to the end. <laughs> but it's important to watch all the different parts. Um, and I'll try to go as fast as I can and be as articulate as I can, which is a challenge uh, for me. <laughs> so let's just get started. Okay, uh, first things first, uh, we need to make the fundamental of the snare. So <clears throat> uh, you can use a lot of different shapes. Uh, you can use a sine wave. Uh, you can use, I mean, you can use any shape, any waveform you want. I like using, doesn't matter, sine wave or a triangle. I like triangles because they have, they're have a little bit more rich in sound. Um, we'll start here. Uh, we're gonna be using a lot of LFOs as envelope in envelope mode. You can actually just use envelopes over here too. Um, but we're gonna shorten this right up. And we're gonna map this LFO one to the volume. And we're gonna put this on envelope mode, take the BPM. Off, so now we got the rate is just higher resolution now. We can control the speed. So we're gonna make a little, just a little burst of information right there. A little burst of sound. That's all there is to it, really. I'm gonna put a spectrum analyzer down here. Use the Ableton one. You can see a little bump happening. What's happening right around 160 hertz, 150 hertz. That's nice for a snare. Um, kick drums usually like 100 hertz and down for like the fundamental. Uh, so you want maybe a little bit of differentiation there. Maybe not. Maybe you want to weigh up the spectrum. That's fine too. But we'll start down here because my sensibilities say that's where we're going to start. Uh, cool. And now we're going to add just like a little pop to the uh, transient of that fundamental tone. Um, sorry. Oh, geez. My nose is itching. Uh, right. Envelope mode. Take the BPM off once again. We're going to map this to the course pitch. Now you can hear it going pew, 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 pew. Shorten this right up. Oh, unidirectional, sorry. We're just making that little pop noise. Pop, 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 pop. You turn it way up. You end up with kind of like a side trance kick. Imagine if you like, you could make a kick that way, playing around with this envelope over here, pitch it down an octave, make a little kick drum that way. We're just trying to make that little click, the initial transient click for your kick, or sorry, for your snare. Talking about kicks. Um, cool, so we got the basic building block, and now we're gonna take yet another envelope. We're gonna map it to this noise oscillator over here. So white noise, envelope mode, take it off BPM, and you got the, the kind of crack in the tail of your snare starting over here. Now you can shape it. I like kind of making it a little kind of jagged just because that's what natural sounds sound like they're not perfect you know it might be super subtle your ears might not necessarily pick it up on a conscious level but I it, more than anything is just having that ethos it's part of what kind of like makes your sound too you know like those little deviations away from kind of the perfect way to do something or maybe even the way that somebody else does something is some of the deviations away from how everybody else does it or you know I don't know I don't like straight lines 
How about that? <laughs> um, right, cool. So now we got like a very electronic sounding snare. Not very interesting. Um, and that's when we start adding some effects to kind of bring out uh, more of the character of the sound. Um, and I like to think about with snares, like I like to try to think about it from like a drummer's perspective or like the physics of like taking a snare, uh, like a, a drumstick and hitting a snare drum and kind of like that burst of excitement, that burst of energy, uh, frequency, like I imagine like an EQ doing the same kind of a thing, like just for that split second, there's like this kind of like burst of sound. Uh, you could do that with an EQ. So I'm going to take an yet another envelope here. Um, and I'm going to map it to the gain. Uh, and actually, if you hold Option and Shift, you can change the polarity. Uh, so we want this going in one direction here. Not, I just said one direction. Uh, yeah, anyway. has very little to do with One Direction, I think. I wonder if One Direction's producers like build snares from scratch. That'd be interesting. So anyway, it starts sounding like a... Sounds a lot more like a snare drum, almost kind of instantly. Cool. Maybe add like a little bit of uh, movement on this frequency. So kind of like. BPM off. Envelope mode. Maybe just a little bit of movement, you know. Then we could do it again. With uh, actually, let's use that same one. We'll do it again using this other EQ here, and that's actually boosting the fundamental. Which could be cool, you know? It's like right around what was it, 200 hertz, 150 hertz? That could be cool. But let's work on the crack. That sounds cool. It's got like a bite to it now, you know? Very subtle. Maybe add a little distortion. Could add a little knock to it using distortion. Maybe you want to map this too. The amount of drive. Put that. All of these are going to be on envelope mode pretty much. Unless you do something kind of more creative. Which could be fun, you know? Less is more. It's funny how when you like you push stuff too hard, it stops sounding as much like a like a snare drum. Uh it's about balance, you know? Already, it might be a little too much uh, distortion. There you go. Cool. So we got our snare drum here. Sounds pretty cool. Um, gotta be conscious of like how loud I'm being here, so we don't get feedback. Um, cool. So the next thing I was gonna do is like uh, we got a really basic sounding snare. It's not that interesting. You know, it sounds like an 808 kind of snare to me. Um, but now we're going to make like a clap. So we use another instance of Serum. Do that. And claps are a lot of fun to make. Uh, and they're super easy to make too. So we'll start with a brand new instance of Serum. And in this case, we're just going to use only 
white noise. So analog, right white. And I think envelope mode again. Gonna make something that sounds like going along the lines of the uh, 808 theme. We'll make like a 808 clap. We're gonna map this to the level. It's like pretty out the box, sounds like a clap. Pretty cool. And if you want to add more of these little uh, peaks, and the more irregular they are too, the kind of the more natural it sounds. That controls the tail. And the same kind of a thing here with like the EQ. Uh, you get a similar type of an effect uh, that we did with the snare by boosting. This is going to sound even more like a clap, like almost instantly. Nice. So yeah, I mean, you got to clap there right away. One other thing too with this snare, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of EQing, um, just to bring out some of the shape of it. A lot of low end that doesn't need to be there. And creating some, got like another little peak here. Take that out. Control some of these frequencies a little bit. Sounding even better. It's funny, like you have, you're gonna have to kind of jump back and forth. Once you get a kind of point of reference with these layers, your brain just kind of instinctively will jump around and kind of play around with the relationship of frequencies and stuff. Add a little bit more pop to that. Nice. Um, maybe add just a little bit of saturation. Not going to be super noticeable. Again, this is all just very subtle exercise and restraint. Um, so let's see how these sound layered. My clap underneath. You know, it sounds. I, I like having like a little bit of a pre-transient. Maybe like putting a clap just like a little bit before the snare. That might be kind of cool. That sounds like super tight. Got it right off at the snare. Give it a little bit more. Pretty cool. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take some of the white noise down a little bit. Yeah, and I can hear the transient a bit more. Cool. Still not very interesting, I'll be honest. Uh I think the other piece, so we got the pre-transient, we got the initial transient of the snare. Um which could actually be just a little bit longer. I can hear it a bit better. Cool. But then we also want to make a tail. So we're going to make a yet another instance of Serum. 
and we're gonna make a tail. And we'll do that with white noise. I like this AC hum. It's got this weird metallic kind of feel to it. Uh, remember envelope mode. Throw this on the level. And similar type of a thing we're going to do with the EQ that we already did a bunch of other times. At this point, create some movement. Yeah, get that little movement going. We'll do it. Some of this is just. Oh, sorry. Envelope mode. Too much game. Then maybe we have another one just boosting something further down the spectrum. Again, envelope mode, do it this way. Move it up. So now we got another layer to put on top. Let's see how this sounds. And in this case, oops, we're gonna have to drag this out a bit further. Turn it down. Now we got like a free transient, a transient, and the tail. Cool. Now one thing that I wanna try doing as well, oh, let me EQ this a little bit. I want this to come out even more. That sounds cool. Uh, one thing I want to play around with a little bit is um, there's a plugin made by Melda. It's called Convolution. Uh, Multiband Convolution. Where are you? There it is. And, you know, there's probably some audio scientists out there that understand to an adept level how this works, but basically it's just emulating reverb impulses and other types of, you can actually even like use snare drums or other, any, I mean, any sound really, and it'll apply almost what appears to be kind of like a reverb effect, but it just adds some kind of like organic texture. <laughs> To a sound, so that sounds very much like reverb. But it just has some kind of like organic feel to it. it kind of puts it into a place I like that because it sounds almost like a China symbol. But you start getting creative with your tails here. Ooh. Some of these aren't very practical, uh, for at least the sound I'm trying to make. That's kind of cool. Super long. Woo! Very interesting.
but just playing around, just testing stuff. The drum one. I like that. Cool. So I'm gonna take all this stuff, I'm gonna group it together. I'm gonna add a uh, limiter. So kind of glue everything together just a little bit and stop it from peaking. Um, Cause Ableton doesn't like when you do that. Let's start changing the volume of these too. Might sound kind of cool to pitch up this transient now. Yeah. Cool. And you might want to add something at the end, like a transient shaper, for example. Kilohertz makes a really cool one that I use a lot. Uh, Transient shaper. Now it's starting to sound like something interesting. And actually now, this little clap guy, I want to bypass. Maybe even give it a mo more of a pre-transient. That sounds cool. There's a nice little knock in there. This sound is a little dark. Cool. I'm going to add more of a tail to this. You, that's a great thing about building your stuff from scratch. Is you can get in here and start playing around. Bring out some more elements. That sounds more. You know what? I don't like that little ring in here now. I'm going to change this to white note. Also, maybe make it just a bit shorter. Sounds tighter. Cool. Turn it down a little bit. Make it nice peaks. Cool. Um, the next thing I was thinking about doing is, ah, something I've been meaning to do a bit more is record some Foley stuff here in the studio. I just have a bunch of garbage laying around on my desk. I was just going to like quickly record a couple things. What I got? Oh, I got a box full of screws and bullshit. Car keys. Just for fun. Let's see where this ends up. I got a box full. That might be cool layered. It's gonna require a little bit of EQing here. Nothing crazy. Shorter. Try doing a little bit of That's pretty cool. 
Got my little key jingles too. It's gonna add like a little kind of like tambourine effect, which is cool. <laughs> like that. You can pitch these around too. That might be cool. Maybe take this guy and put it in the beginning. There you have it. Let me make this a little bit longer again. Remember, it's like the little moves you do kind of inform the other one. like it. Maybe turn this down, up, down more. Depends on what you're looking for, you know? But anyway, I'm just tweaking away here. Depends on all the different layers you want to keep in. That sounds solid to me. Maybe the key thing isn't really working out as well as I wanted it to. But anyway, you get an idea. So, you know, just imagine, I think the beauty again is that now that we have all these different layers of stuff going on, you can go in and pick and choose, uh, you know, what layer you wanna bring out more into the mix, you wanna change around uh, you know, maybe for this tail or whatever, you want to change the kind of white noise there is or the EQ on it or the movement. Um, maybe you want to take the tree transient off and just have a straight snare. Uh, you know, maybe you like just the Foley and the snail snare by itself. Uh, You can make all different kinds of stuff. Once you get all the building blocks there, it starts to kind of make your mind jump around into the creative zone. Uh, instead of being so fixated on frequency and, you know, the subtleties and that, that exercise and restraint, I always have to kind of like say it out loud. When I, uh, whenever I end up in a place where I've turned a sound into like noise, I just say, this is an exercise and restraint. And it almost kind of triggers me to go back into the envelopes and stuff and shorten things up and take some effects off. Uh, but in the end, I think it puts you into this mode where uh, you start approaching all your production stuff in the same way, like sound design with crazy bass noises or, you know, you end up in that on a, on a kind of like bigger scale, you end up in that space with your mix. I'm sure you guys have been there where, you're trying to mix your track and it's like, man, this just sounds like noise or how come I can't get my kick drum or my snare to pop through the mix better. And it always goes back to less is more like exercise and restraint. What, what else in the mix is like turned way up? What else in the mix has tons of highs in it? Uh, I think doing things like building drums from scratch, it, it kind of like sharpens those sensibilities, sharpens your knives, so to speak. Um, but I hope this stuff was interesting to you. I know there's a lot of tweaking involved, uh, but I hope that in the end you saw how you can, you know, from humble beginnings, turn them into something that's really interesting and ornate and organic sounding. I mean, that's pretty cool. I love that feeling of like someone saying, man, I love your snare drum. Like, uh, I wonder how you got it to sound that way. And it's like, well, to start with, like I, I built it from scratch, you know? And uh, that's just like a really good feeling on a personal level to be able to say that and listen to your song in the end and say, I made all those drums, you know, like myself from scratch. It's like such a cool feeling. But anyway, uh, I hope, as always, uh, you guys are having fun in the studio. That's the most important piece. 
And I hope to make more videos like this. I'm going to, once I'm done touring, I'm going to try to get in the studio and do, do another one, uh, maybe in a month or two. So anyway, uh, I guess I'll talk to you guys soon. Have fun. And uh, I love you guys. Peace.